Welcome to Favorite and Least Favorite Things in Friday the 13th, Part 6, Jason Lives. All right, everybody. So with Friday part six, immediately you see this James Bond inspired title sequence. And you know right away, this is going to be a very different Friday movie than we've seen before in the franchise, especially when compared to Friday part five. This is generally considered one of the fan favorites in the franchise. A lot of people love this movie. And a lot of people I hear say this is their favorite Friday the 13th movie in the entire franchise. For a lot of reasons and i can see a lot of the goods and the bads in this movie for sure which we'll get into of course with all that kind of stuff but um yeah in this movie it uh takes place at this place called forest green now it was crystal lake and the name has been changed uh you know to try to get rid of the past of jason now that jason is finally dead and died in friday the 13th part four right so Friday Five generally got some pretty bad reception from the fan. Very similar to Halloween 3 when that movie came out that didn't have Michael Myers. Friday the 13th Part 5 does not have Jason in it. So a lot of fans of the franchise, you know, enjoyed some aspects of the movie, but overall we're like, come on, we got to get Jason back. I personally, if you've seen my video on Part 5, I enjoy Part 5. It's got a lot of great things in it. This is not a part, not a part five video, but uh, there's some things definitely like in part five. But generally, even though part five made part five made some good money, fans didn't really like it and wanted Jason back for sure. So in this one, Jason is intentionally way more supernatural in this movie, and the, you know, for the first time in the franchise, really, he's kind of this superhuman zombie character from you know that we see kind of from here on out in a lot of the movies from here forward in the franchise. So um, yeah, and, and this movie mostly ignores part five for the most part. And um, this thing, there's just so many things that are different when you compare this movie to the previous movies, especially if you compare it to part five, like I've already, already kind of mentioned before, this movie has no nudity for the only time, which is the only time in the entire franchise we have no nudity. Um, even just if you look at like the whole sex scene with Court and Nikki in the RV, it just feels so different for a Friday the 13th movie, you know, almost like a PG-13 movie in a way. And, and a lot of there's a lot of instances in this movie where it does kind of feel like a PG-13 movie, except for the kills, for sure. The kills in this movie, very solid across the board, which we'll talk about more in, in a minute, of course. But uh, we also get a little bit of like meta stuff in this movie, which definitely inspired Scream later on. Kevin Williamson even even admitted to that. Um, there's some fourth wall stuff, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Just so many things in Jason Lives that are so different than what we've seen so far on the franchise. Um, like I said, Definitely. Um, and uh, way more mainstream. This movie just feels more, just bigger, more mainstream in a lot of different ways. So this movie is written and directed by Tom McLaughlin, who was only 36 years old when he uh, made this movie. And uh, a lot of people on the production thought it was a great idea to bring in kind of a younger director for this movie who was going to try to have like an innovative approach to the story. Tom went to the studios, watched all of the previous movies back to back and just really sat down for a long time to try to come up with something new because there were some aspects of the franchise that he was hesitant to take on this this job because he was like man is this you know are people done with this franchise and um a lot of stuff you'll see you've seen in this movie is inspired by some of the classic monster stuff we've seen from universal monster movies in the past for sure so in this movie of course we've got this whole like Home Depot zombie Jason, you could say, which is definitely inspired by some of the old Universal monster movies, like I mentioned a second ago, especially characters like Frankenstein, for sure. Obviously, in the beginning of this movie, lightning brings back Jason. Definitely some Frankenstein vibes there. Jason's played by CJ Graham in, in this movie. Uh, he's like 6'3", 250 when he played this role. And kind of an interesting story. So after like the first day of filming this movie, they fired the other guy that was playing Jason, just didn't like how he was portraying the character. And then somebody from the production was actually at a show at like this restaurant club kind of a thing where CJ Graham was actually working. So they do this show at this restaurant place 
where they hypnotize people and then a part of the hypnosis thing is they like come face to face with Jason and CJ plays the Jason in the show and one of the guys I think he worked on the special effects team saw this saw CJ Graham was like oh that's actually pretty damn good and presented CJ essentially to um McLaughlin and was like hey like maybe consider this guy for Jason I think he'd be pretty good for it this is a, obviously, like I said, a big menacing Jason, very different than like the Jason we see in Friday the 13th part two, for sure, which is much more like, like a normal kind of sized person, much more human-like. But of course, this big menacing Jason is gonna play the zombie, almost unkillable version of Jason, which a lot of people love, for sure. And just a heads up, at the end of this video, kind of towards the end, I'll have my overall thoughts and review of the movie. But let's get into favorite and least favorite right now so um favorite location in jason lives so for me it's got to be camp forest green i just think you know we don't always get the camp vibes the camps the summer camp stuff in this franchise like we did early on in the franchise but this is definitely up there as one of the best summer camp vibes in this franchise camp forest green is just great it's just a great setting brings you just kind of gives you a little bit of that original Friday feel to it you know it's got a good lake <clears throat> unlike part three it's got you know just good just a good looking cabin setting we got some good sequences inside of the cabins the the dock with the lights is pretty iconic and of course we get that big sequence at the end with the lake which is iconic too but yeah favorite location of the movie for me it's got to be Camp Forest Green I just enjoy it so least favorite location in Jason lives for me it's the police station yeah, it's got to be the police station. It just looks like a corny little police station you would see on like a children's show or something to me. Yeah, least favorite location in the movie is the police station, in my opinion. So favorite character in the movie. There's a lot of pretty solid characters in this movie. There's some fun ones for sure. But I got to say it's Tom Matthews as Tommy Jarvis in this movie. When I think about Tommy Jarvis, it could be partially because of the video game. But when I think of Tommy Jarvis... I, uh, the adult Tommy Jarvis, I definitely think of, of Tom Matthews. I think he's a good actor. I love what he does in this movie. His voice is great. It, just the way he portrays the character is great. He's resilient. He's the, plays the hero in this movie very, very well. Love the fact that we got Tom Matthews again and some more in the whole Never Hike Alone uh, movies, the fan, the Friday fan films. Love that. He was great in those as well, but great character. But um, also, um, got to shout out Jennifer Cook as Megan Garris in this movie, too. I think uh, Jennifer does a great job as Megan, one of the better final girls uh, in some ways in this franchise. So, yeah, Megan's good, too. She's fun. She's sassy. She's smart and all that kind of stuff. But favorite character, Tommy Jarvis, for sure. Least favorite character. Uh, there's definitely some annoying characters in this movie, but my least favorite character in Jason Lives it's going to be actually like a little duo for me this time. It's going to be Stan and Larry, the two dipshits out paintballing. I know there was like four people paint, paintballing, but it's the two guys that stick together. They're just annoying. They kind of just seem, yeah, they're just, they're just bad characters. We'll talk more about the paintballing scene uh, in just a minute. But yes, least favorite characters are going to be Stan and Larry. Luckily, they get killed. All right. Favorite line in Jason Lives. So for me, um, it's gonna come from Martin, the old graveyard caretaker. He says, Martin says, I know I'm gonna get blamed for this. Say old Martin ain't a good caretaker. I'm a damn high school graduate. I deserve this job. <laughs> it's a good line. <sighs> I deserve this job. Of course, we also get uh, from Deputy Rick Cologne. Yes, the classic line, the iconic line, the memorable line. You know, of course, wherever the red dot goes, you bang. We all remember that one, which is, you could say it's the worst line of the movie. You could say it's the best line of the movie. It's just one of those. It's just memorable, you know, but it's a good one too. Least favorite line in Jason Lives for me, it's going to be a line. It's just a line that comes across as like, I mean, I know the 80s. It was a different time. People talk differently in the 80s, um, but still. It's a line that always stands out to me. It's like, really? It's just a cheesy line. But it comes from Court and Nikki. Uh, they're talking together and they're looking at the, uh, it's outside the RV and the cord for the RV like got ripped or cut or whatever. And, uh, and they're like, look at this. What happened to it? 
And then Court says, I don't know, but I say, unless you want to look exactly like it, you make this place a memory right now. Make this place a memory right now. That, that is definitely an 80s vibe, like a line that you would definitely see in the 80s or hear in the 80s, I'm, I'm sure. But in real life, in a movie, yeah, but in real life, I don't know. That line's just always a little, a little much for me. Make this place a memory. All right, moving on. Here's the big one. The next one is going to be favorite kill in part six, Jason Lives. It's a tough one, right? Favorite kill. You could argue that in Jason Lives, we get some of the most consistent kills out of any Friday movie. Yeah, you could argue there's Friday movies that have a better kill or a couple kills that are better than the kills in this movie. But across the board, this movie's got some pretty solid kills, which helps definitely to offset the, the silliness of the movie, um, for sure for me. But my favorite kill has got to be Sheriff Garrus when he gets his ass folded up like a lawn chair. It's a great kill. Anytime you can have a brutal kill like that, that also makes me laugh. There's something to be said about that. That's a win, definitely. It's always a good sign when you can make something so brutal and also just laugh your ass off. I love that. Um, it's also not one of those Jason kills where it's just like, Somebody's walking through the woods and surprise, there's Jason and you get killed. No, it's not like that. It's like a pretty good, fun little fight between the two. Obviously, you know, Sheriff Garris is a main character in the story and, uh, you know, beats up Jason a little bit. Unfortunately for him, Jason is essentially a zombie, but still they have a nice little fight, which is capped off by the good kill. So, yep, favorite kill, Sheriff Garris right there, the lawn chair kill, I like to call it. But least favorite kill in Jason lives kind of a tough one a, sort of here I almost went with Bert's smiley face kill just for the simple fact of it kind of crosses that line for me of being a little bit too cheesy in a Friday the 13th movie well in this movie I would say but there's some good things and some fun things with that kill obviously Jason gets his machete He's, he's like looks at his arm you know like stuff there's just some fun stuff with that kill so i couldn't make burt's my least favorite kill i had to go with the old double kill with steven and annette as my least favorite kill in jason lives it's just kind of run of the mill jason just stabs through them they're both dead boom done nothing really spectacular there um so yeah least favorite kill it's gonna be steven and annette so favorite scene in friday the 13th part six jason lives so favorite scene is going to be, it's got to be the end, the iconic ending when Tommy and Jason finally get to really unite and face off after all these years of Tommy going through all this trauma about Jason ever since he was, what, 12 years old, 13 years old, whatever it was, all the hallucinations, it all culminates to Tommy and Jason meeting once and for all by the lake, by Crystal Lake, essentially. You know, it's just a fun scene, iconic shots. Megan comes and saves the day, another great character, great final girl. And um, yeah, and I love that we also like have that underlying question about Jason, like, okay, we're hoping that Tommy and Megan can, can get through this, but how do you kill something that's already dead, you know? It's that underlying theme of this is a new Jason. So what are they going to do? Just a great moment. Great scene. Love that whole scene at that at the end of the movie. So for me, least favorite scene in the movie is going to be, it's got to be the paintball scene. If you cut out the paintball scene from this movie, is it still the movie that people love? Yeah, it still is. For me personally, the paintball scene is just a little bit much. Is it the worst thing in a Friday the 13th in the white? Is it the worst scene in the Friday the 13th franchise? No, of course not. Is it silly? Is it kind of funny? Yeah, I guess. But for me in this movie, I think it is a little too much for me. So yeah, least favorite scene, the paintball scene. So, all right, up last is going to be favorite piece of memorabilia that I would want from this movie. I mean, there's a lot, but besides something obvious like 
Jason's mask or Jason's outfit or something like that. I'm going to go with Tommy Jarvis's jacket. Tommy's jacket is iconic. I don't know. Love jackets in movies. You know, we get a lot of great iconic jackets throughout uh, movies over the years. And in horror, I think Tommy Jarvis's jackets, it's up there. It's up there. Would love to have that. But yeah, so Jason Lives, like I said, fan favorite in the franchise for sure. I have a great time with this movie. Not going to spoil whether or not this is my favorite Friday the 13th uh, movie in the entire franchise. I'll spoil that when I have a full franchise ranking. But I do enjoy this movie. Going back and watching this movie, it reminds me um, that it's not too silly for the most part. It's not too silly because there are so many solid kills in this movie that help to offset it. So it's got a good blend of silly, fun. They take the source material here and not take it too seriously, but also give us brutal kills, good characters, a fun storyline. It's crazy that this movie was made for three million. You know, I think like part three and part five and part four, they were made for around two, 2.2 million. This movie's made for a little bit more. But like I said, just has a bigger feel to it. Feels way more like blockbuster for only a tiny bit more money. So shout out to the production and the team for making this movie feel like just more for less. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, Jason Lives is fun. It's, it's, it's one of the best movies to, one of the best Friday the 13th movies to put on with a party. Of course, it depends on the vibe of the party, but if it's just like a fun, lighthearted, silly party, maybe having some drinks or whatever, Jason Lives is a good one. Jason X might be another good one, depending on the people at the party. But yeah, definitely fun for that. This movie, um, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, also gets definitely a little meta, you know? Um, like when the, the girl and the guy are in the Volkswagen bug and she's like, I've seen enough horror movies to know, blah, 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 blah. Very like, you can tell, you know, Scream Scream was inspired by this movie in some ways. Also, you know, the fourth wall stuff with Martin literally looking at the camera. So there's definitely some interesting things in Jason Lives, but a great Friday the 13th movie, a lot of fun, a really good Jason, good kills, good characters, just a good time overall. This movie maybe shows Jason a little bit too much for me. You know, Jason kind of loses his mystique a little bit because he's just always in front of the camera. He's just walking in front of the camera. There's not quick cutaways or, you know, showing Jason as much in the shadows. So maybe a little bit of a knock there, but overall great time. So yeah, there you go. Favorite and least favorite things in Friday the 13th part six, Jason lives. So thanks so much for watching everybody. Um, go ahead and check out one of my other Friday the 13th videos. I'll go ahead and show those right here right now if you want to check those out right now. But if you enjoy horror content in general or content like this, then make sure you subscribe as well. I've got all my social media links down below if you want to follow me over there. Also, I have a Patreon if you want to support this channel and also get some more content. I've got content over on Patreon that you can't get anywhere else other than on Patreon. So just an extra way to support the channel if you want to do so. But again, my name is Matt. Thanks for watching, everybody. And I'll see you in the next one.